Okay, so hello and welcome to the seventh in our series of 10 free talks to get your craft businesses ready for digital and physical opportunities in 2021 and beyond. These talks have been created by Crafts Council and funded by Crafting Europe. Uh, we have a translation option for those joining us from Ukraine. Uh, and remember, you can, uh, for those of you joining, uh, we, I can see you coming in, so I might wait a little bit longer. Um, you'll get a chance uh, to ask questions that you can pop into the Q&A function. Uh, we are also recording this webinar, which will be available next week on our Crafts Council YouTube channel to support your ongoing learning. Uh, before I welcome our guest speaker, Juan Juncker from Studio Manalo, I'd like to provide some context of how presenting your ideas to clients strengthens your business. So the rationale, the why. Working well with clients can build long lasting relationships that not only can bring benefits to you in the near term, but also as part of your longer term business plan. It can provide you with a viable income stream and allow you to provide bespoke services as part of your business offer. Soon we'll hear uh, Juan's insights, but first I want you to consider if you might wish to offer bespoke work if you're not already. If yes, have you struggled to put your ideas across to a client or to be selected in response to a brief or a commission? This talk will help you have a stronger impact and secure future projects. As always, factor in the time you take to carry out research as part of the activities that you do within your business. Three areas you can research um, are other craft professionals. What services do they offer and how do they communicate this? Find out about the types of companies and organisations that offer commissions. Um, and also, what are the types of offers being advertised? Consider the scale of the project. For instance, how long do you have to complete the work? And it's crucial that you can work to a budget and part of this is knowing the costs or at least the estimates of all the elements required, such as any materials that you need to order. Um, I'll pop some of the links into the chat later on. We um, have a, a craft opportunities Facebook group, Facebook group uh, that you can join. Uh, it's a public group um, you can see opportunities and commissions that you can apply for or you can visit the uh, opportunities page on our Crafts Council website too. Finally, um, research into the operational elements that you'll need in place to make your offers viable. For example, if you need to work at a larger scale than usual, can you access a bigger studio space? Or if it is a site specific project, can you arrange for reviewing? And can you factor in a contingency plan in case the costs or time go beyond what you had originally planned? Moving on to marketing. Um, effective marketing is key in securing work in response to a commissioned brief or promoting your own bespoke services. Think about how you can inspire people to connect with your ideas and have the confidence in yourself that you can do this. It's worth going the extra mile when presenting your ideas and deliver a strong presentation as an answer to a brief. This will help you stand out amongst other craft professionals also applying for a commission. Next is creating working to a structure. So take time to work out um, a budget. This is really vital. You, will, you may need to invest in imagery, photography, video, um, renderings, any 3D sort of sketches, models even, that highlight your skills um, from previous projects. So document all your previous projects really well so you have everything at hand. To market your bespoke services along with good images, you will need um, budget for promotion. Uh, such as Google, Facebook ads, or even a campaign to specific agencies, for instance, if you wish to work with interior design consultancies. Uh, planning, so timeframes are really crucial. Uh, a key method in working towards a deadline is to create a timeline and then work towards this date. It helps if you work backwards from this date, giving each stage a realistic amount of time to complete. And remember to add some buffer time or you can end up working many late hours in the studio. The who. So if um, you don't know who your potential clients are, refer to our second uh, spring back talk, how to build customer profiles. Also refer to our talks on getting the most out of Instagram and Facebook, um, which also share information on how to reach your target market and attract new clients. 
So into looking into the future, building long lasting relationships is vital to sustain a business. Offering bespoke services can um, often requires nurturing an ongoing connection with your client base. Ideally, the result of this is that clients will come back time and time again. Aim to provide good communication of your ideas and ask any questions you have throughout the process. Not only does this show that clients have been listened to, but it also ensures that everyone is on the same page and clearly understand what is expected at every stage. Okay, so now I will hand over to Juan who will share more on how to present ideas to clients and please do add any questions for Juan into the Q&A. Okay, thank you. Hello Tanvi, uh, hello, oh. Caroline, thank you for inviting me today and thank you, thank you for everyone that's attending. Um, right, so we will talk about how to present ideas to clients. Um, so the, um, the structure of this presentation will be well, a brief int introduction about who I am, what we do at Studio Manolo, um, how we interact with the, our clients, uh, especially that first contact that's so important to, to establishing, you know, setting off uh, to a good start, um, working to a brief, defining it, setting a frame of work, and then finally how to communicate these ideas to our clients. Um, Towards the end at the Q&A, we're going to touch on other uh, subjects like uh, copyright, uh, contracts, health and safety, insurances, employing people to fulfill uh, larger projects, um, and some other points. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, uh, Studio Manolo is a, a small um, woodworking workshop. We uh, operate from Greenwich. Um, it's a team of uh, five people at the moment, and we work mainly with um, architects and interior designers uh, on um, full fit outs for residential and commercial projects. So what we we are passionate about wood. We, 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 we love working with it and we love to provide solutions um, to, to architects and, uh, um, and consumers um, in terms of um, furniture. Um, and also like do the project management for larger projects. So um, an architect will come to us after they've started a conversation with the client, they've been working with them for a, for a period of time. And after an initial stage in which they define, um, they do their design, their general design, they will come to us uh, as joiners and uh, furniture makers to work on the actual uh, over project, the budget, and uh, how to design the constructional aspects of it. Um, so we, there are three, three scenarios. That's the first one, which is the, um, uh, the bread and butter of our business, really. Um, so the, in, that, in that case, the designers will have uh, worked on the aesthetic aspects and that will be sold to, a, to quite a large extent. And then we provide consultation in terms of materials uh, finishes and uh, the project management. So how things fit in within the, the larger uh, project. So there's a, a other contractors to liaise with. Uh, if you are, if you happen to be making a kitchen, then there will be other trades as well. And things need to be uh, timed and, 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 and slot in, in uh, smoothly so that there are no no problems um, and that's what we what we do when we work in such projects um, another scenario is um, our own speculative designs that uh, when time allows for it we like to develop um, designs just to uh, it's like an output for our creativity and also a, a chance to test things out and um, to uh, it's a marketing exercise as well. So we, we will take these pieces to shows and also keep them as a uh, as, as stock as well for eventual sales. Um, so um, here in the, in, the, in the screen, you can see um, two examples of the, of the first kind of work. So these were for uh, different arch architects. On the left hand side, we see part of a residential project that we did with studio Walter Navarro. Um, this was, uh, these are two units made in solid ash entirely. 
uh, on the right hand side. Uh, it's also another uh, project with the same studio, uh, Walter Navarro, and that's a Pilates studio in Kensington. So that project was uh, one of our first full fit outs. That was back in 2017, 18, 18, I think. And it was um, entirely made in Douglas fir, um, mostly solid, uh, probably up to 90% of it is solid. Um, that was a good example of like a consultation that we did, um, which is, is something I see as a very powerful um, sort of tool when pitching for, for a job. So it's sharing this knowledge. It's about um, helping the client understand what can be done, what is possible with the material, with the budget. And in that project in particular, I remember there were lots of talks as, as to what, where can we use solid wood, where can we use veneers. And um, it, it was, it, I think it helped uh, give a really good impression um, having those initial conversations <clears throat> with, the, with the architects. Um, following here in the second, in, in this slide, there's a, there's a clock actually designed um, by, by the same architects for that project, um, Cor Kensington. And on the left hand side, uh, there's a photo of uh, Block Gym in Shoreditch. That was our first actually uh, full fit out. Um, we actually did half of the space and uh, yeah, share the, 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 the joinery pack with another um, joinery company. So we, we did all the solid parts of the, the cafe. Um, we can see there in the photo, a four meter long uh, solid Douglas fir bench and the table. Uh, similar, um, this, this was uh, designed by Daytrip Studio, um, which we are very lucky to, to have a good relationship with. Um, they are like, really, really interesting designers to, who make really good use of uh, different materials and textures. And um, with um, with this project, it was uh, you know the, the, the usual um, scenario will be that the architects so they, they have the, the the design intent and all their aesthetics is sorted out, and um, then they will come to us and we consult on how that can be realized, and we then make our own. Uh, construction drawings and put them to review and then we start the making process. Um, on this slide we see some work done for EVA Architects um, run by, uh, directed by Benny Allen, a very talented architect as well. We have a good relationship with them uh, and we work in the, in, the, in the same way. So we get the drawings and then we, we start a consultation project in which we define how we're going to, to make this happen. So the, the, the ones on the left and on the right hand side that's the same project is uh, the old match factory in Bow. It's a conversion of a, a small flat but in, done in a, in a very clever, beautiful way. It was our first sort of uh, venture into more of a, the proper joinery world. We made the mezzanine as well as a staircase. Um, it was a very, very interesting uh, project full of like new sort of challenges for us um, as, as practice. Um, in the center, there's a very recent recent project all done in Cherrywood, <clears throat> also by Eva Architects, and uh, they involved some built-in furniture as well as some freestanding, uh, lots of solid wood and veneers, which is what we like and do best. Um, there's uh, another photo here of the, the, the Stockwell project with uh, Studio Walter Navarro showing both Alco units. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to check where we are. Uh, so this this is my uh, design for uh, the Milena chair. This is the third iteration of it, and this is what I was talking about when I mentioned like speculative design. So these are often freestanding pieces, uh, like this chair or the, the cabinet there on the left hand side. The Christmas bubbles on the right hand side, those were actually designed for as, as Christmas presents for our clients. And, uh, you know, we, we, we love uh, doing work like this and, and it, it's, 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 it's fun to do. We get good photos of them and then we can feature them in our website, uh, bring them to shows, um, basically use them as, as, uh, as marketing uh, material like the Pampa table there as well. And um, on the right hand side, a collaboration 
um, of, uh, with, with uh, Eva Architects as a, a line of uh, a small line of furniture. We presented that in London Design Festival 2018, actually. Um, so the, the a third scenario is when a client comes directly to us without there being a, a an architect or interior designer. Usually these are smaller projects and we well they might they might have a, a different degree of, um, of, of of development of the design so <clears throat> they might have seen something on, on on a magazine or on the internet and they want something similar or they they want uh, one of our designs with a variation maybe or, or they might not have much of an idea so in that case we we have to work with them to to establish what, what, what's needed, what they want, and can we do it? So I'm going to talk more about that situation uh, because it's where, where we are. It requires more of a presentation, basically, from us. So um, that starts with, uh, well, it's, it's, it's like pitching for, for, for the job, basically. So in the, in the, in the initial conversations, the, the, the most important thing is to gain the, the client's trust. Um, and this is because we won't, we won't be able to develop a design until we actually have got paid uh, some, some, uh, some amount of money. So we, we have to um, inspire this confidence in them that we will be able to deliver something that they will be satisfied with and that we will be satisfied with as well because it has to work for both parties. So the most important thing about this um, uh, first uh, initiative conversations is, is to cause a great impression, basically. Um, I find that it's easier the, 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 the more experience that the client has in commissioning bespoke work, which is not, uh, not always the case. So, you know, when they, when, when they have never done it, then they will be full of questions and, and, and you have to do quite a bit of work in, in sort of, uh, well, educating in, 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 in how to commission a, a, a piece. Um, <coughs> excuse me. When, um, when, when having these conversations, these first conversations, the, 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 this, this trust that we need to, to, to earn and, and, and this confidence I was talking about that we need to inspire in them, it has to be based in a frame of work that we establish to to limit the design possibilities um, so this, this this will set the frame uh, for us to work and um, uh, it's, it's, it's based on, on requirements and, and limitations of different nature for example um, a budget that's a, a quite obvious one um, you know you can make a table from a thousand pounds to thirty thousand um, pounds depending on, on, on a number of factors. So <clears throat> there are in, in cases in which you can actually just ask straight away, what, what's your budget? Uh, and that might make things much easier. Always, uh, obviously not always, you will get an answer, a straight answer. Um, it happens more with uh, larger projects, uh, say like a full refurbishment of a house, then it's easier you might get from, from, from the architects or, or contractors uh, an actual figure and, and, and then you work around it. Um, so it's a question that you, know, you have to gauge according to, to, to your interaction with the client whether you think it would be uh, appropriate to ask it. Um, then the time scale can be another restriction. Obviously, if they want something done in two months and you are booking in until booked uh, until Christmas, then it's, 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 it's probably not going to, to, to be possible, or, or maybe you have to uh, get some people in to, to, to help and, and accelerate production, then that could make things um, more costly and, <clears throat> and therefore um, affect the, 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 the price of, of the piece you're making. Uh, techniques can be another, another restriction or, or defining factor in the design. Um, so we need to define that as well. So what, what will it require? Uh, do I need to learn something new to actually produce this piece, uh, or, or can I even do it? Or you know, so that that's important as well. Then availability of materials, 
um, aesthetic language. Uh, if again, if, if they want me to produce something, a piece of uh, period furniture <clears throat> is really not what I do. And if I were to, to attempt something like that, then I will have to factor in time to get in, in, in tune with that language. Um, and then there might be other specifics, like I've had this situation where somebody wants me to make something out of a, a tree that was felled in the back garden. And then that will affect as well the design. Uh, so I had to work with a very specific uh, piece of wood that's uh, in a specific place. I'll have to get it to the workshop that will affect, it will cost some money. Um, it will probably have a certain shape that might uh, affect how much I can use of it. So all of these things are important that we define early on. Um, it will help make the process uh, more smooth and efficient. <clears throat> Moving on, um, once we, we've established that, we can assess whether is this really something that's suitable for us and are we suited for, for it? Um, and it's important that we are honest about it because it, it, otherwise some, somebody, you know, you, you could end up uh, wasting your time, money or the clients. And um, it's just a, a professional thing to do, I think, to know when something is really not, not, not for you or, or, or you should, yeah, uh, or not for the client, for, you, know, it's your, you might not be the best person for it. And also at this stage, you can, it's an instance in which um, you can manage the client's expectations and, and your own in terms of, for example, I've had situations where somebody shows me something like, you know, like, like, like let's say an armchair, an Oracle armchair they saw online and they saw it for a thousand pounds and they are expecting that you will make it for, for the same or even less. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's an opportunity at, at this point to say, well, are you prepared to pay three, four times that much? Because, you know, bespoke work does not compete in price with something you find off the shelf. So that's, these are, this, the, 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 this is the moment to, to sort of get this, um, deal with these expectations and real expectations. So, if, if we are going forward, then presenting an idea, like Tammy was saying earlier, it requires an investment. So it's an investment of time, resources, um, and you have to gauge how much of it you're willing to, to put into it. So uh, things that will, uh, I will base the decision, decision on is the job size, obviously make it proportional, uh, if I'm pitching for, you know, a, a, a dining table, I'm not going to, to you know, to, to put the same amount of, uh, of work into a pitch as if I was uh, pitching for a full house refurbishment and, and, and all the joinery in it. Um, so that's, that's one, one, one thing that could affect it. Then um, maybe you, you're willing to invest more because it's a new client and you're really keen to work with them and it could be the start of a long-term business relationship. Um, it could be an opportunity to, de to develop new ideas. Say you have a design that you've been wanting to, to make for a, long, for a long time and you think you're going to make it anyway. Um, well, if, if there's an opportunity that somebody will fund the development of that design, um, then even if it feels like you are maybe putting a little bit too much on the, onto that pitch, well, you are also doing it for yourself because that that will fund the development of it. Um, maybe you don't have a lot of work going on and you have the time to invest on a, on a pitch. And you know, that's just work sometimes. So this is for you to, for each one to, to gauge according you know, to, to the situation, to the circumstance. <clears throat> so the, 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 the way to actually show what, what, how to illustrate ideas, um, the, the best way I find always is with actual pieces. So say I have something along the lines of what the client wants or, or helps illustrate, you know, a piece I have that in, in the workshop helps to illustrate a point. Um, then it's, it's the best thing really, because they, especially with, well, I work with wood. So, um, you know, it's, it's very tactile. It's, 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 it goes a long way if the client can actually 
come to the workshop and 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 see a piece I made and touch it and sit on it. It is a chair, and that is the it's the best option because it um, it's a situation in which you can have a face to face conversation. They can come to the workshop. Everybody loves the workshop visit. Um, it's interesting, and you can you know make up tea, and 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 they can get to know you, and then you can get to know the client. So that's that's um, it's always the best option. Um, if that's not available, or even to support that, then images. And like like Tammy was saying, getting those images of your previous work is is, is just of paramount importance. Um, once that you you sold the piece and it's out of your workshop, really the photos that you have of it are the piece for you because you, you might not ever have access to that piece again. Um, so getting good photos of your previous work is, is very, very important. Uh, you can also use archive images, like something from, from the web, for example, if you want to illustrate um, a, a detail, show, show a, a, a material. I wouldn't use photos of, of someone else's piece to, to, to try to convey an idea of a general aesthetic, but you know, for details, things like that, they, they, they can be good. Or maybe your own sketches, um, or even uh, either by hand or, or, or in software. There on the screen, I, that's, that's a, a design I developed during a pitch. Um, it's, there is a, a, not, a fair amount of work into that, but that's, that's something that it will definitely use that actual, that actual uh, job didn't go forward. But I knew, you know, this is storage, a storage solution. Uh, I will make that design at some point. So I judged it was worth the, the, the going that extra mile to, to, to uh, sort of develop. It's, it's almost finished that design, apart from the doors. And I put my watermark into it. If that ends up somewhere else, they know it's mine. Or I developed that design and um, yeah, it's just a, a really powerful way. So it also looks very professional, I think, if you if you can present things in, in, in CAD. Um, here's an, another example that was for some tables for Elephant Park, yeah, the, the, the development in Elephant and Castle. Um, and the, these drawings that you see on screen were from also from the, the pitching stage. So they're a bit more... Um, uh, detail. They have even measurements on, on them, but <clears throat> I judged that it was it was well worth doing that at that stage because well I, I did I had a feeling that the, the job was pretty much in it was pretty much booked even though I hadn't got paid yet. But um, yeah, so I judged it was it was it was good to to go give them a little bit of extra information already and, and try to define this. Uh, measurements and maybe some materials. Um, another way of showing ideas is, is using samples. So uh, we see on the screen some samples of uh, veneers and solid wood for a project that we are making. Actually, um, this is good because uh, again they can you can send them on the post and, and the client gets to to feel them to see them and they act as controlling samples. If they decide to go forward, then you, you keep it one one in, in your workshop, you send one away, and, and then that's something that you can refer back to. Always, always, always make samples of finishes. Um, then you can make samples of design details, for example, of a, of a handle or, or, or a door hinging in a, in a, in a certain way. Um, all of that helps uh, illustrate the point. Um, mood boards are very good as well. Um, they, they, they help sort of convey your general idea about things and a general aesthetic uh, used a lot by interior designers. I, I occasionally use them. I, I think they, they are great as well. You know, you can show um, detail, you can show different finishes. I'm showing a handle there and, and, and some construction details. Um, in, in, in this one, there's like different options of you know, a few materials. You can definitely see like a a color scheme and 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 everybody loves as well in mood board. I think they they, they, they look great and, and they're very very effective. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Lastly, um, so like I was saying earlier as well, it's, it's very powerful uh, as a tool for for presenting to your clients your own knowledge. So 
you, you, you know your craft, you know what you're doing, you have experience, show it, share it, uh, impress them. Um, it, it will, that goes a very, very long way. And <clears throat> it, you, you, you can become a referent, uh, you know, someone that people uh, know that you know your, your, your craft and, and, and they will maybe come back to you for questions and that, that could lead to, to commissions. So that, that never underestimated the power of that, of sharing the, the, the knowledge. Um, so here we, I'm going to show you some commissions we've actually made um, in, 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 in the last couple of years and uh, with examples of how, how I uh, illustrated the, 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 the design idea. So this again, these are tables for Elephant Park that we made, uh, that were made with trees felled from the site, uh, London plane trees. And <clears throat> uh, there was a, a very specific brief. Uh, they wanted uh, meeting tables with a cubby for, for uh, media, to connect media there and uh, on a sort of uh, mid-century style. Um, so we, I, I, I created these CAD drawings, uh, made the samples you can see there. Um, and then this is the, the evolution of it. Moving forward into the project, um, I, I created more uh, detailed drawings. So now you have to be very, very detailed because this will serve as a, uh, it's basically the, the, the paper trial paper trail um, if anything uh, goes wrong or you need to refer to the, what was agreed then these drawings are, are, are the best uh, for that so you, you, I will make and, and I will use these to communicate with my team and so they know exactly what they are making so I, I share with them and then I send it to the client they review it um, in this case we made renders as well um, I don't always do that um, but yeah, uh, for some reason, um, yeah, we judged it was, uh, was uh, a good idea to do it. And um, these are the final pieces. Um, so that was uh, Elephant Park. <clears throat> then this is another example. Um, in, in this case, the, the, there wasn't a design yet. Uh, I was sent a photo of a table. Um, obviously, you know, I wasn't going to, to copy it, um, but I said I can make something, you know, in, in my own uh, language. Uh, obviously, when, when when they come to you, which is it's often the case, I get most commissions by word of mouth, and. If they're coming, they've already seen my, my website. Uh, there's a good foundation there of, uh, you know, you would expect that they, they like my work already. So the, there's a foundation there of trust that you will produce something they like. So all, I send that first photo, uh, you see that the first <clears throat> sketch um, to support my estimate. So that I sent my estimate, I said, this job will cost this much and it could look something like this and they go back to me they said yes we'll go forward but we want something uh, more uh, i can't remember exactly what i think it was more danish looking or mid-century looking and then we developed uh, the designs you see in the second the third and fourth uh, images there so on those, I put my watermark. That was before before we were called Studio Manolo, and um, yeah. So it, I judged that that design was more of a you know the first one is very generic, and the evolution of it, I felt like it was appropriate to use my watermark there, and and, and that way wherever that goes, you know, it's, it's it's something I developed, and these are the the, the finished uh, finished pieces. Um, this this next one here you saw the photo earlier uh, this is from from that project with uh, eva architects uh, this is the dining table slash kitchen island so this would have come pretty much sold in terms of all the, the, the aesthetics uh, from eva architects but we made our own workshop drawings um, 
that I use to show exactly what we're going to do. Uh, there was the hub uh, in there the, that, that required a lot of thinking. How does that hub interact with the rest of the table, the wiring? And so you really need to be precise there. And, and also for my, for my makers. So I, I produce these drawings, send them to the architects and the client. They review it when they say, OK, we make our cutting list and we start making it. So um, the, the 3Ds are very useful as well. Uh, and then these are the finished pieces. Uh, this is, again, a recent project with Eva Architects. All that solid cherry with a veneer top. So in, 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 in summary, the, the way I see presenting ideas to, to client is that it's always an opportunity, whether it will go forward or not. Um, so I am presenting not only, and there's probably not a design to present yet at the beginning. You are working with vague um, ideas that the client brings sometimes. And so what are you presenting there? So I think it's more about presenting yourself, your business, your expertise, your quality of service, your USB, and anything that will make you uh, will help you make a good impression. So it's all about uh, them being confident that you will deliver something they're happy with. And if it doesn't go forward, that they will go away but recommend you. Um, so it's, it's, it's presenting always a, the, the larger uh, picture basically to the client. Uh, well, that's, that's my presentation. We can move uh, on to the Q&A. Thank you. Hello, Juan. Thank you so much. Uh, that was really uh, such beautiful images. Thank you for sharing um, the, the key insights into your studio and all the stunning work that you created as part of your many projects. I'm sure uh, makers will get a lot of value, especially seeing things that you don't necessarily get to see. Um, because you're often looking at finished pieces on on websites. I'm not sure if you have any preparatory sort of um, the process that that you document that you share publicly, or is it only to your clients? Uh, not in the in the website. No, yeah. uh, I, I I share those with my clients, but uh, not so much on the website. Maybe on the Instagram. I, I tend yeah. to because I, I I see that more as a a bit more of an um, a spontaneous way of communicating with my clients. The Instagram. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so before we, um, I'm going to have a few questions myself for one. Um, and to the audience, thank you. I can see there's um, some great uh, questions in the chat, so we will get to them shortly. Uh, I particularly sort of uh, found the example that you gave about involving the air call chair interesting because mm -hmm. it's it's sort of it's a classic example of designers often being asked to recreate or copy off the shelf work or something people see. And unfortunately, this might mean sometimes that the clients think it might be cheaper or that they might not necessarily realize that the designer has honed a process that they've developed over many years. Um, like you said, you, you have your own language, mm -hmm. which is very different. And, and non-designers tend not to be able to see that as, as you know, sort of um, very distinctly as we we might be able to. Um, so, mm -hmm. for instance, like working with particular materials or a process or a narrative in your work is really key to, to sort of um, designer makers. And can you explain how you handle the part where you might say no to the request or that you sort of gently guide them to closer to what you could actually create for them? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, it's, it's, it's a good point. I. I... I think if, if you're going to, to, to say no, it's, it, it's, it's, it's not personal. It's just, you know, it's, 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 it's business. It's a, it's, you're a maker, you have your own, uh, your own language, your own ways, and, and it doesn't have to, to, to work. You know, there's, there's, yeah. there's lots of makers out there. Like I've recommended other makers. Yeah. I have done yeah. that. And, and the response I got actually, uh, it was last year only. I can't remember what what the, the, the brief was exactly, but for some reason it wasn't. I think it was the, um, with, with pre-existing trees as well, like some you know. And I was like, I I don't have the capability of milling mm. the trees from from scratch, you know. It's yeah. and I know makers actually love that. 
So, you know, I, I totally recommend them, you know, and, and, and the response I got was great. Like they, they, they thought it was so professional, you know, and, and it, I think it is, you know, it's like really knowing what you can do, what you want to do, you know, mm. what you can offer and, and then being honest about it. For example, another, another situation that, that happens often is uh, with kitchens. Can you make a kitchen? I go like, well, I can, but you might want to go to a, a specialist kitchen maker because they will be more efficient, really. They do it day in, day out, you know. So it's about, yeah, being, being, being honest and, and, and that avoids just problems for everyone. Yeah, builds trust and, and you're also, you're sort of supporting other makers as well in that way. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a network. Yeah, we're not in isolation. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little, um, I'm gonna go into something where we what we talked about just before we went um we started the webinar which was uh, about paper trails so yes. um responding with emails over whatsapp or even direct messages on instagram many clients have nowadays they have lots of ways to get in touch with you um mm -hmm. can you talk about how it's very important how important it is to have a paper trail yes um, a digital well, trail <laughs> yes yes um i i personally don't um my my experience is that we, there's not that many contracts drawn unless the, there's the, the the public sector involved. Like when I work for the council, there's been a contract, but um, even even in some larger commissions, uh, there won't be a, a contract. So I rely on the on, on the communications and all the documents. So I send an estimate. It's a document. It has my logo. It has my address. The client's address, and a description as accurate as possible of what work I am going to do. And there's also Quite a bit of small print that I have added yeah. because I've had problems problems before where you agree to something and then mm -hmm. a small details, sometimes like very insignificant aesthetic details, can throw a project mm -hmm. budget out the board. Yeah. You know? So uh, I added, you know, some some like standard practices to my estimates. So uh, there's a note at the bottom. It says this is based on standard construction methods. And that means we use this, this, and that. In this situation, we use these materials or that. And and I tell my clients, do read that because that's what you're going to get. If you want anything different, so for example, finishes, uh, anything that's stained will be an extra. And that's the, my estimates yeah. uh, because that adds a whole process. As you know. So use documents, uh, we send a quote, the same is a, a, a written quote. Um, and then email on the not so much WhatsApp to talk about anything that's like defining because WhatsApp, you know, you, you delete it, you reload it, you lose everything. Mm. So emails, um, I try to categorize every email with the project number with, so I can access it quickly and things don't get lost. Yeah. And, and, and yes, I rely mostly on that. Then there is also like a lot of renegotiation that happens after the project has started, because things change, when, especially when you start dealing with larger commissions, like you know, you're doing a, a restaurant or a full house, and and you can't set everything up, up, up from the start. There's no way, especially time scales. Yeah, it's impossible. So, and <laughs> luckily, it often ends up um, us waiting for the client. Because we come with, I make furniture, we come with the furniture and the joinery is sort of last in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, a, a refurbishment project. So yeah. it's usually me waiting for them. So if it was the other way, I'm sure I will, I will be getting much more contracts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. So I'm going to, thank you for that, Fine. Um, I'm going to go to some of the questions. Uh, a couple of them had a similar theme about protecting your designs. And I noticed that you, you shared your specs with what that were watermarked. Mm -hmm. So that, I, I consider that as part of the practice of trying to protect your design. So a couple of them um, specifically went into a situation where you might have provided a pitch but didn't get the job. Um, and then later found that subsequent work that they had somehow got was almost identical to your pitch. Has that ever happened? Or do you know of other designers where it's happened to them? It hasn't happened to me, um, luckily. Uh, I think, as, as, as far as I understand it, uh, you have sort of automatical um, rights, copyrights arising from the use of your work, your brand, 
um, and this is all uh, supported by this paper trail. Uh, so I, I rely on that, and I, and and this is you know from talks with other makers. I, I, I haven't heard this being uh, much of a problem. I do know of a situation where a a brand of clothing in America just took a design, uh, like a graphic design um, of, of a friend, and uh, they just developed a line of clothes with, with that design. Yeah. And it was actually, it was a, a, a picture of a pineapple, but it was actually made with a proper pineapple, like printed onto fabric. So it was, um, yeah. and they just picked it up, created a whole range of uh, clothes. And, and my friend was like, look, that's my, that is my design. I actually, yeah. Yeah, and they actually got a payout. They, yeah. they, they stopped yeah. uh, producing the, 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 the products and they got money for it. Right, yeah. So, I th yeah, obviously if it's stolen somewhere else far away, where it, <laughs> it, it, might, it might not be easy. <laughs> yes, the, but, the legal costs would be <laughs> something else. I do remember, um, recall a designer, a really well-known one who had their, their own manufacturer had actually copied their work because um, somebody had said, oh, have you seen this has been selling? I didn't know you were selling in such and such company. And it, it was an overseas manufacturer, but they just sort of were creating it. And I think there was a legal case for that. And uh, that was mm -hmm. been a long time ago. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, that can happen. Um, there is, um, I don't know if Carolyn, I saw she was commenting something, it might be the same thing about, I don't know, oh, yes. the, yeah. the people from ACID, anti-copyright in design, I think they are very good for, for this and, and they have a, what do, like a, a design um, archive or vault where you send your designs and, and they, that's then a third party having proof that that was designed by you should you ever require that the proof yeah so yeah so uh, and so caroline so for the, those who are watching the recorded version it's um www.acid.uk.com and thanks caroline there's briffa as well uh www.briffa which is b-r-i-f-f-a dot com um and next uh, there's a couple of more uh <laughs> there's a, a quite a few quite thank yous which is great obviously uh um oh yeah so this is a great one from rachel what what point in the process do you charge for your time so if the project doesn't go ahead do you just lose out financially on that time sort of pre yeah, yeah you do yeah so it's yeah. like an r d cost in a way to your business yes definitely <laughs> yes it, 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 it's i don't know I, I, i've never been so lucky that they come with, with and and Tell me, here's a deposit. Now, can you make this? No. Say, so, I want this. I'm looking for that. Do you think you can? And now, with with experience, I think I've got. I'm quite confident about uh, my estimating of what it's going to take. So I can estimate quite quickly, and and I can um, sort of. I, I know how much I will have to put in before I actually get a deposit. Okay. But, yeah. So. Ah, uh, yeah. So with the, that sort of experience, you can sort of become you have more educated guesses about almost factor in that pre sort of development phase, I guess, yeah, yes. into the cost of this. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, and then also you start getting better at gauging the, the, who the client is, is it going to go forward? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have I, I've, I've been in chats sometimes about the same project for like a year. With somebody that's never ever commissioned anything else, it's an end consumer. It's, it's not a, an architect or that's going to bring more work. And and you know they, they won't get the same attention that my architect client that comes you know every three months with a full house. Yeah. Yes, of course. You've got to be very uh, just prioritize your clients as well in terms of your your time is precious. It's money and it costs. Your overheads are always going to be there and. Um, yeah be very sort of specific and um i guess uh pick very, very wisely who you work with um i'm just going to look at a couple of more so there's something about jewelry what standard except lead time making bespoke items i uh, maybe i could ask answer that a little bit i've worked in jewelry um galleries before and i have a jewelry practice but not gold rings or <laughs> i don't make wedding engagement rings although i get asked to do that even though 
I work in textiles. Um, so a lead time when making bespoke items in terms of jewellery. Um, again, it's sort of similar to how uh, Juan said that you, you sort of, with experience, you realise how long it takes to do a certain stage or complete a certain stage of, of the, the making process. And it, it usually sort of, you could say six to eight weeks, which is sometimes a kind of a standard for, for most sort of bespoke items. So that's for mm -hmm. Heather. Um, and what's there was another question for um, about your presentation had some really wonderful images um, like the digital designs. Mm -hmm. uh, can you for for people who who don't necessarily have um, the software to create them? Is there any tips that you can give them to sort of while they're starting out? Oh. Or app easy apps or anything like that. Apps well, um, a lot of it was Google SketchUp. Well, it's not Google anymore, SketchUp, uh, that has a free web version. Yes, I forgot the name of it. <laughs> Maybe it's uh, Diamond yeah, SketchUp. or something? I think that, that it's Trimble, the, the company that produces it now. The web version is free. Uh, the paid version is about £300 a year, I think, or 350 something like that. Mm -hmm. It's well worth it, like learning CAD and using it and yeah. putting Make spending the time in designing what your A, A, A3 printer will look like, the, the PDF with your logo there and, and, and everything, it, it's yeah. well worth the effort. Yes, and it also gives a very professional look, doesn't it? We're very clean and putting those tiny little measurements, every detail sort of makes it much neater to refer back to very quickly, yeah. Exactly. And um, what's... Oh, we've got about 10 minutes, so that's fine. Uh, what's your most effective way of generating leads and clients? I mean, I like the bauble idea, which is to also nurture, but also when you, I, I think the baubles, you were also giving them away, were you? At yes, shows, yes trade they, were, they, they were to treat uh, clients I already have. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. generate leads. Um, well, social media, that's a bit of an obvious one, but it, it's, it, it always helps. Sharing knowledge. You know, if you, if you put things in social media and, and you show that you know what you're doing. Um, shows, I've had a good experiences from shows. Um, then contacting people, just get in touch with people. You like somebody, you want to work with somebody, like uh, 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 architectural practice, whatever. Yeah. Call them, uh, have a chat, uh, you know, approach people, present yourself. I would like to so you know hello i'm this and that i make these i like to show you what i do and and, and send them send them a sample uh, yeah every every I, it's like almost like every interaction could be an opportunity you know yeah. for, for, for 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 a for a lead uh, and you never know where it's going to come from it could yeah. be a friend of a friend it could be someone completely new mm. uh, any, yeah, anything. yeah so when you're, I often say to makers that, you know, having your conversations with people you're working with, like your, um, if you're in a shared space, studio environment, uh, you could talk to your studio mates about sort of, oh, I'd really love to work with such and such clients. And then they'll be like, actually, I know somebody. And it, a lot of these very um, lovely uh, commissions and opportunities come your way through just simply a conversation with a friend who happens to know someone. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, actually, a good example um, with with Eva Architects that I'm doing a bit of work. You know, I've done a few projects with them now. With Benny is is the director. That was Instagram. Okay. I I, I wrote to Benny and said, "Hello, I've seen you like my work. I like your work. Should we get together?" Yeah. We went, had a pint, talked about <laughs> doing something. We we developed a design. Uh, a little furniture range and ended up in work together. He's rocketing, his career is doing really well, yeah. uh, sending me quite a few quotes to look at yeah. and that's how it started. Yeah, it's lovely. That's That seems more natural to make as I imagine as well, just to have that more authentic way of connecting instead of sort of, I'm on Instagram and now I've just got to sell and uh, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm actually, you're actually there to do the social part, which is the interaction mm -hmm. with each other and and actually take it offline if you can, if, if it's possible. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Caroline. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm really, really enjoying this conversation between you both. Um, I, I just thinking that we've got just a few more yes. minutes left. 
um, just had a, a question around research into your clients. Um, you know, you've talked a lot about uh, securing the briefs, how you present it, but I was wondering how much vested interest or research do you put into a client so they feel like it's a really personalized response? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, again, it will depend on, 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 on what the commission is, what it, what it looks like. Uh, because I, I have had that. I, I put a lot of work into it and then only to realize that it was not going anywhere and, and just like wasted an enormous amount of time. And so it really depends on, on, on the client. It, it, you know, if it's a, a repeating client, well, I will go the extra mile. I will find them more samples and put them in touch with people, suppliers, I you know, open doors for them, to look after them, but it depends who the client is really. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm sort of thinking of a couple of projects that I've been involved with, um, Hugh Miller and Angus Ross. They were both mm -hmm. doing a, project, a couple of projects and they really, really got excited about the brief. And so it kind of went that extra mile to do the research so they could secure that, that, exactly. that brief. Yeah, 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 thank you. Um, one final question, I think, um, and uh, this is very much for, you know, people that are just starting out. Um, what were the obstacles there in place when you started and how did you manage to overcome them? I suppose sort of those, a couple of key takeaways maybe for people just starting out. Mm. Um, it, a lot of it was about that confidence in, in how to do things uh, most, mostly. Like I, I was confident about my making, but the running of it and, and you know, it can get become a bit daunting when there's a few pieces in a project and, and, and how and hiring people, delegating. So I found, well, I, I, I did work for, for other people after, right after college and, and, and I was looking at everything they did, writing down, you know, really, really looking at how, how they, 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 they organized the, the, the whole work. Um, then shared workshops are great. It, it, it's just so good to have people around to ask. I still do. It, it, you know, it's, a, it's an ongoing thing. It's, and, and it's fun, it's nice to work with other people, but um, you're in a shared workshop and you, suddenly your pool of knowledge has been multiplied by however many makers there are there, you know, if you have good relationships. So yes, it's, it's, it's ask other people for help and, and, and yeah. It's, yeah, it's all yeah that's so important, isn't it? That, that peer to peer support. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I, we can bring this to a close. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Juan, for thank your you, time today Lovely. and your insight. Thank you, Tanvi, for chairing this. A brilliant job there. Thank you. Um, and for everyone else, thank you for joining us today. And, you know, uh, the, the few things that I'm sort of really taking from this is getting some great imagery of your work really think about what um, the client is asking you in regards to respond to that pitch um, and really consider if that's uh, achievable. Remember the paper trail, so important on that paper trail. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for Crafting Europe uh, for funding this. We're going to release our poll. Um, if we could ask for your feedback, that would be really brilliant. And our next talk will be on Wednesday, the 11th of August at one o'clock. And that is very much about honing your writing skills. So it's perfect following this talk about how to pitch to a client, working with clients. Now we're gonna help uh, hone your writing skills. Uh, so come and join us then on the 11th of August. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.